So, Professor, uh, you you have done a lot of work in quantum mm -hmm. and as well as a lot of work in blockchain, mm -hmm. right? And so, when for a lot of the audience, uh, there's two very separate technologies. Mm -hmm. One works in the classical world, and the other, obviously, is the emerging mm -hmm. world of qubits, yep. right? Yep. So, you are talking about um, binary bits mm -hmm. and qubits coming together. So, what's mm -hmm. the synergy there? Okay, well, if we look at uh, blockchain from its uh, from its own perspective, then uh, there's various areas of improvement for blockchain. So in the security side, then you've really heard of the blockchain trilemma, mm -hmm. where it's impossible to actually increase the security and the size of your network of decentralized nodes and the speed all at the same time. You have to sort of trade off between one or the other. So the first thing I kind of looked at when I, when I got back into the kind of quantum technologies was, can quantum break that trilemma? Can we do something to improve blockchains when quantum technologies are good enough? We've got quantum networks, we have quantum computing. And uh, I did a few experiments and I've got some very, very interesting uh, research done that proves that I think we can, we can improve the security because we have quantum networks. Quantum networks are very secure channels where you're exchanging these qubits with each other. You're talking other. about the QKD, for example. Q yeah, QKD, one, one example. Yeah, yeah. Yes, QKD. Okay. So that's uh, uh, one example where we exchange keys using the, the quantum quantum networks, which transfer quantum information, but more importantly, they they transfer entanglement between qubits. And the big big difference between classical and quantum networks is that with a classical network, you don't know if you've been hacked necessarily. But with a quantum network, as soon as somebody reads a qubit or breaks the entanglement, then you'll know instantly. So then you know your communication has been, uh, has been broken and you can resend a different key or whatever. So it's secure. It's sort of more secure anyway, but also secure in the sense that you know when it's not secure. <laughs> so how, how is that going to be applied in the blockchain world then? Because uh, if I take the example of Bitcoin, right, and blockchain technology... A lot of us are familiar that blockchain technology is the one that's running, powering Bitcoin, right? And then, of course, you have the audit cryptography algorithms, right, uh, in, in, the, um, in the blockchain, uh, Bitcoin blockchain. Um, so, of course, there are people who say quantum computing, computers will break some of these algorithms. But how will it secure blockchain? Okay, so uh, what I did was I, I created the three nodes on one quantum chip and connected them through entanglement. So we can actually connect the nodes. So this is a kind of far reaching or far future technology in that we need to have quantum computers and quantum networks and they have to be connected together. So uh, it's not gonna to happen tomorrow probably, but it should happen in a few years time. In fact, when we reach that point, we'll then have the quantum internet, which is also talked about. But going back to blockchain, so first of all, the communication between the nodes uh, can be more secure, but also because we're using entanglement, we can also increase the speed. And entanglement can actually be done across nodes as well. You can have multiple qubits entangled. So that means the consensus can be faster. We can have more nodes. Quantum scales up very nicely with a, a two to the power of your number of nodes. So we can have more nodes, more information. In fact, I can see that we can actually start having big data in our blockchains at the moment.